Let's learn in this video how to create a complete CI and CD pipeline in Azure DevOps in order to deploy a web application and a database into the Azure cloud. In this pipeline, we'll explore the build process or the build stage where we'll go to build the application, build the database projects, run static code analysis for our, for our code, and then during the second stage, which will be the deployment or the release into the dev environment, there we'll go to create the infrastructure in our cloud subscription using ARM templates or Terraform, and then we'll go to run static code analysis for these uh, infrastructure as code files looking for any misconfiguration and then we go to deploy the web application and the database. So let me first explain what is the um, flow for this pipeline. So first we would have the application source code into the developer machine that will be pushed into a git repository and that will trigger the build pipeline where we go to build the application, then generate the packages, then code the scan the application source code, build the database um, project to generate the duckback files or the SQL scripts, and then um, build the UI integration tests and upload all of these and artifacts into the release pipeline, where from the release pipeline, we'll go to download these artifacts and then we'll go to start first by creating the infrastructure that will host my application. So here I want to deploy a web application and a database, so I need to create that infrastructure. And in my case, if for example, I'm using a cloud provider like Azure, I would use some ARM templates or Terraform in order to create templates that will create or provision that infrastructure for me. And uh, within those uh, tasks or this job, I can also go to scan those infrastructure files to look for any misconfigurations there and then I'll go to deploy that infra files and after they were deployed I can also go to scan the, the resources deployed but by that template and my cloud provider to look for on again any misconfigurations onto these files. Once they have that infrastructure ready, so that uh, let's say that ARM template created the web application that is an app service and a SQL da server database in uh, the Azure cloud, then I go to deploy my application. So I go to deploy the web application and that database. And with that done, now I'm ready to run the unit tests or not actually the unit tests. Unit tests are only on the build pipeline, but running the integration or UI tests using Selenium against that deployed web application. And after that, I would actually repeat this process for my different environments because maybe I have dev, ENT, U, uh, QA, UAT, pre-prod and production environment. So I would run these same pipelines against all of my environments right here. Let's see how that works in real life and within Azure DevOps. So from here to prepare for this demo, I've created this uh, Git repository where you would find actually all the source code files for the different projects where we have a web application, unit test, database, and the ARM templates, and also the, um, uh, the Selenium UI tests. And we have also the CI and CD pipelines that you can get uh, from, from here and that I'll be using later in Azure DevOps. Switching to Azure DevOps, I'll find that YAML uh, file that I've imported here. Let me explain the content of this YAML file. So first section here is PR that uh, uh, that will set up the trigger for this pipeline. What triggers this pipeline so that it will be triggered after a pull request made on to the dev branch and I'll exclude some files right here, right? Like the uh, documentation folder or the readme files because it doesn't make sense to launch the pipeline after uh, a change into these folders here. And uh, then I set up another section for the triggers where I can trigger this pipeline based on a commit on master. But again, I wanna exclude those files also, for example. So it's up to me to set up uh, th uh, the right policy or the right um, uh, setting for these triggers. And then I define some parameters. So in my pipeline, um, sometimes I don't want really to run all of the tasks of my pipeline. So I have created a parameter called run complete pipeline. I want to change the value of this parameter when I run this pipeline. So look here when I run this pipeline, because this is a type parameter, it will give me here a parameter asking, do you really want to run all of the tasks? So if I, it's by default, 
true because that's what I've stated but if I uncheck it it will be the value will be false and that value actually was used in the uh, in the next uh, stages to say to enable or disable such tasks so that will allow me not to run all the tasks in my pipeline so this pipeline uses the multi stages so we have uh, three or actually four different stages first stage is for the build and second stage to deploy to the dev environment third stage to uh, deploy actually into the uh, other environments and so on. Let's start first exploring the build stage where here I have defined a job that is called web app and into this job it will run actually into a Windows Server virtual machine. It will go to use the build configuration release and then it will use this uh, uh, simple CI pipeline that will go to build the application source code, restore the NuGet packages, uh, scan the application uh, source code, and then upload the scan results into Azure DevOps, and then it will go to uh, run the UI tests, and then it will go to create the package or the zip file. After that here, I'll go to, it will go to push uh, that zip file or upload it into the artifact. And then we have a second job for the database that will go to build the database and then it will go to uh, generate that will generate actually the duck pack then we publish that duck pack into the drop. And we'll do the same for the Selenium. We build the Selenium project using MS build right here and, restore, and of course we don't uh, forget to restore the NuGet packages and after that we push the DLLs into the artifacts. And for the infrastructure, we just push the ARM templates or the Terraform templates into the uh, artifacts. Next stage here, which is the second one, is to deploy into the dev environment. So the idea here is that I can connect to another subscription and then I can deploy the ARM template into my subscription that will go to create a resource group, create uh, a, an Azure app service, create a SQL server, database, server uh, instance and a SQL database also. So from here, I have the configuration that I'll be using. So I have the variables that I have specified. So I'm using some composition or concatenation between different values. And I have some values for database admin and password. And of course, not for the password. This is not secure at all to do it like this. So we have other uh, options for securing that password, either using Azure DevOps secrets or using Key Vault secrets. Uh, then here we have other config for database name, web app URL, uh, SQL server name, prefixes, and so on. And the job uh, of deploying to, um, to the dev environment, uh, I would actually start by um, downloading the ARM templates from the drop folder. So uh, they will be saved into the drop. Uh, and here I've done checkout none. It means I, it will not go to download the application source code from the Git repository because I don't need it in this uh, job, okay? I just need the ARM templates which are already in the uh, drop folder. Then I'll go to validate the ARM templates. So I'm, for that, I'm using this task right here. And with this task, I'll go to connect to my, uh, it will go to connect to my Azure subscription. So for that, I've actually created a service principle uh, for my Azure subscription and then added that service principle into Azure DevOps uh, connections right here. I have a video about uh, uh, that goes in details about how you can uh, do that. And then I select the uh, override parameters for my templates, which are the values that I want to override and uh, so on, where I want to deploy my uh, template, which is the name of the resource group, and then the ARM template that I want to use, that is my JSON template, and so on. And then I use another task that is the Azure um, Security Kit in order to, um, uh, to scan the uh, resources describe it into that YAML pipeline and then I use another tool actually to scan those uh, ARM templates which is TTK so uh, we have a task for TTK I just configured it to give it the name of the uh, folder where I have my templates and then where it should put the results of that uh, scan then I'll push uh, the results from TTK into Azure DevOps in the unit format and then I'll go here to preview the template changes. 
So you know now with Azure with Atom templates we can run this command what if in order to preview the changes that will be made by the Atom template to see what are the resources that will be created just before they are really created in Azure uh, in my Azure subscription. And then uh, once I get this uh, this preview to uh, and once it's validated, I go to deploy really the RM template. So again here I need to connect to my Azure subscription using service principle and then specifying the uh, subscription ID where I want to deploy and a bunch of other parameters like also uh, interestingly of course the parameters that you want to override right here. And then once those resources deployed on my cloud subscription, I'll go to uh, scan those resources looking for any misconfiguration. And for that, I'll be using Azure Security Kit again for uh, verification tests. I configure it with subscription ID and so on. And next, I'll go to deploy the dev uh, environment. So I'll deploy actually my applications to the dev environment. So that RM template created a web app and a database. So I need to deploy that web app. So I need first to download the package for my web application, which is a zip file. And then I go to use this task to connect to my Azure app service using again the service principle, specifying the app service name, and then deploying the zip folder. After that, I go to download the DAC pack folder from the artifacts. Okay, so specifying uh, that I want to download the DAC pack and then connecting to my SQL Server instance um, in my Azure subscription and then connecting through the database login and password and then deploying that DAC pack file. Deploying a DAC pack is actually like deploying the SQL scripts. It's similar, uh, similar uh, case. Then after deploying into the dev environment, we'll go to test that environment. So we'll go to run unit or integration or actually UI tests in my case here, which are written using Selenium. So I do that into a separate job uh, that will that will depend actually from the dev from the deploy dev, which is the previous the previous uh, job, so that I can make sure that I don't run the uh, the UI tests before the uh, or I, they will be run it only after the application is deployed. So I'll download the Selenium tests from the artifact and then I go to run the command or run the tool VS test in order to run these UI tests from within the build agent in my pipeline. And next I'll should actually do the same steps for deployment into the test environment and the production uh, environment. I just keep it simple like this, but what you can do is just copy the same steps and reproduce it onto the other environments. Let's see now running of this pipeline. So I go, go click run, run the pipeline. And yes, here we see the pipeline started running, it will start with the build apps, the first uh, uh, st the first stage that will run the four jobs and you see the four jobs are running in parallel right here. And uh, so that will continue, that will take a few minutes, but let me show you a pipeline that did run it successfully before. So you can see it from here where we have the different uh, uh, steps that did run it. I can just take a look quickly at these different steps. So first uh, a stage for building the web application, building the database and so on, then creating uh, the dev environment, uh, connecting um, or deploying the ARM templates, then validating that ARM templates, scanning the ARM templates, and we can see some results of uh, uh, those um, scans and scanning also the ARM template using TTK, for example and then publishing TTK results and previewing the changes that will be made by the ARM template using the what if tool within uh, ARM CLI tool. So we can see this is gonna create the SQL instance, create the employees database, create uh, some configurations inside there like the firewall rules and so on. So all of these changes that will go to create five, uh, six uh, resources to create and five to ignore, for example. 
and then deploying the actual RM template, scanning the Azure resources, and the results will be available from the test section in Azure DevOps. And we can see here a summary of uh, uh, the scan results and what are the scans that did fail in this case. And then next job is to go to download the uh, artifact web app, deploying it into the Azure app service, deploying also the DACPAC file, and then at the end running the Selenium UI tests. And um, yeah, and uh, that's all. Now, if I go to, if I go back to the build right here, I could see in the section tests, the results of the execution for all the tests in this uh, uh, pipeline. So we can see here the results for the integration tests or the UI tests and also for the unit tests and again also for the uh, scanning the resources. So overall I have actually 38 tests in this application. What I have also done in this pipeline is that I have run a UI or a scan, a code scan using a Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud on the cloud. And this is one, those are the findings from that uh, uh, scan. So that's a nice tool in order to look for any misconfiguration or any uh, bugs on your, on your application. Great, I hope this was a nice demo on, on the capabilities of Azure DevOps for deploying web applications and uh, databases. Remember the pipeline, the full code of the pipeline is available on this Git repository. So go to check it out and thank you for watching. And now because uh, those resources were deployed to the Azure subscription, I can also show you actually that a resource created. So if I go to my Azure subscription, that would create actually this resource group. And within that resource group, I would have the resources created as part of that RM template. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that we can see here the SQL server, the app service plan, the app service and the SQL instance. Let's go to the app service and click on that. And then we'll view here the app service uh, um, deployed in Azure. I click the link for that app service. And yes, here it is my application deployed on Azure using Azure DevOps pipelines. I can go to employees to view the list of the employees from my pipe from my database. And yes, here it is. So all is working fine right here. Great, I hope that was a nice demo. Remember that the CI CD pipeline for this demo is available on this GitHub repository. Thank you and see you in next videos.